Hey everybody, we're going to do a little work with sprite sheets today in SFML. Sprite sheets are a great way to do animations. Um, you can see here that um, we actually have all the animation frames that we want um, for our character all laid out in one file. So this red-headed lass um, has kind of a down-facing position, left, right, and facing up, kind of the standard um, ways we might move around in a um, you know, kind of Zelda style game or you know, role-playing game or something like that. Um, this is a pretty simple animation. Um, it's four frames. Um, you can see as we go across a row, you can see, okay, we're basically standing still. We're moving our left arm forward. We're standing still. We're moving our right um, arm forward. And hopefully the idea is, is as this character transitions through those, if we cycle them correctly, you'll actually see a, see a nice animated um, feature. So our, our goal here is that we've made one PNG file um, that has all the information we need to do um, our, our character. And then we're going to basically grab little chunks of this file and apply them as needed. So kind of to start off, um, you want to make sure that you have, um, you kind of know where your sprite sheet is. So I have my sprite sheet um, C++ file here, and I was lazy, so I just put it in the same folder. Um, honestly, if we're doing a, you know, any sort of substantial project, we'll have some folders like resources for our sounds and images, and we put it in there. But for this case, um, we're just going to uh, put it right there. So. I'll kind of go over the, um, the, the, the initial setup of the sprite sheet and then I'll go into some things I did to, to make it look a little nicer. So um, right off, first thing we're going to do is um, we're going to set a, create a texture object. Um, a texture object, what it is, is actually to hold the image file um, that we, we load into it. And then the sprite is basically a um, you know, you can think of it as like a little white box. It's, it's, it's going to get the texture applied to it. It's sort of the thing we move around. So the texture is our image and then the sprite is the actual sort of object that we will control and see if it collides with things and, and what. So right here we have a quick little load of, um, of the actual file. So we ask the sprite sheet to load from file and then we type in our um, the path to our file. Um, we use PNGs um, a lot with sprite sheets, um, mainly because they keep transparency layers. Um, and a lot of times we want our um, sprite to be on a, a transparent where it's not the actual um, character that we want. So I have a little message here. If you notice that this says, if not sprite sheet load from file. So basically it says, if this doesn't, if this doesn't return true, then I'm going to print out, I failed at spriting. So that's nice to get a little message basically telling you that you typed in the wrong name here, you put it in the wrong spot. And the second thing we want to do right away is we want to actually just like attach the sprite sheet to our, um, to our, in this case, player sprite, okay? So what this is doing is just saying, hey, hey sprite, you're going to get um, things from our sprite sheet. Um, and we'll notice that we're setting the texture. So at this point, it's actually got the whole sprite sheet is kind of what is um, being looked at, but we are gonna fix that in a minute. We don't want it to show 16 pictures at once, we want to show one at once. Um, so now we go into our, you know, our main loop and we come down here and this um, is actually where the, the command that actually sets up um, how to pull the, pull the actual specific part of the sprite sheet that we want. So we have this command called set texture rect, which is for set texture rectangle. And then we have um, the int rect, which um, you may or may not have used, but basically it's an integer rectangle. And we basically have to give it the things that we, we care about. So the first um, pair of this is the top left corner of the sprite that you are interested in. Okay, so um, this is basically sort of like let's find um, you know which uh, which corner we're interested in, and then down here we can um, these guys right here. We are basically saying what what size are the the tiles in our um, 
our sprite. So in this case, we're saying that these are 32 pixels across and 48 pixels down. I'm kind of zoomed in. If I shrink it down to normal size, you can see these are kind of, you know, small sprites. 32 at top, 48 down. So what's this going to have happen is that in our initial case, I actually made a variable called um, row and frame here because I, well, I'm going to start off at zero comma zero and it's going to be the top left corner and these guys I'm going to cycle through them. So how am I cycling through them? This is actually kind of um, the important thing is you could set them up so that when you click the mouse or move the keyboard or whatever, I just wanted it to show a walking animation and I wanted it to change in this case once a second. So I did couple of things. I set my frame rate limit to be 60, so it can only do 60 frames a second. And then I made a little counter that said, hey, if I get up to 60, then, you know, time to change the frame. And this little line of code is very useful for dealing with um, these switches, is that you want to know which frame you're on. And then this is actually your modding by how many frames are in your animation. So in this case, this is kind of spot frame 0, 1, 2, and 3. So I'm in a mod 4 situation. And then once I've done that, hey, my frame went up by 1. OK, I reset it back to 0. I count another 60, and then I'll keep doing that. And then once I've gone 4 frames, what's going to happen? I'm going to reset. OK, so let's run it and see how that looks. And let me drag it over to this window. For whatever reason, it's being weird about me actually dragging it. Keeps wanting to uh, maximize it. Wow, that's a fat one. Okay, let's uh, let's shrink this down here. So, anyways, you can see right now we have a very slowly walking. Um, thing. Let me uh, zoom in a little bit so you can see. Um, as you can see here, about once a second, the transitioning arm forward, arm back, which is just what we want. So now we can mess around with, um, because of how we set this up, um, actually this should be uh, 48 times row, uh, because we wanted to jump down the thing. So for instance, if I wanted to cycle through one of the animations, I could say, Hey, let's, um, whoops, I want frame to be zero still, but I want to go to the next row and I want to take a look at um, what the uh, animation looks like on that row. So if I hit play, you will see that I ended up with, um, got to do this little trick again over here. Um, you'll see that I ended up with the side animation now, okay? So all I did there was um, switch, which, uh, switch which row I was at here, and then my little ink rectangle guy would pick the right spot. So again, what are we doing in, in general? We are making a texture in a sprite, we're loading the file, we're setting the sprite sheet to the whole thing, then we're coming down here and picking which spot out of that that we want. We're going for the upper left hand corner of the, uh, the cell we want basically, tell how big it is, and we can always snipe out the thing. In the end, we can make a sprite sheet that has more than one character of information on it, right? And uh, then we can use one texture in memory and apply it to all sorts of sprites in our game. Hope that was useful, folks. Have a nice day.